we have three charges kept like this. These are fixed charges, let's say. Now imagine I take this plus two Coulomb charge and slowly move it along this path and bring it to this point. So that now it is at a distance of three meters. These are all in meters from the charges. The question we wanna try and answer in this video is, in moving this charge, how much work did that external agent, that is me, how much work did Mahesh do in moving the charge from here to here? And we also want to calculate how much work did the electric field do when the charge went from here to here? How do we do that? Well, we can always go back to our basics and say, hey, work done is force into displacement. And I can try and do that over here. The problem is that the force keeps continuously changing, right? As I come closer and closer to the charge, the force might start increasing, which means I have to do some integral. And look at that path taken. Ah, no, we're not gonna do any integrals over here. So to avoid integrals, we introduced the concept of potential energy. But whenever I used to do these calculations, I used to always get confused with the signs. Is it final potential energy minus initial? Or is it initial minus final potential energy? And I used to always be confused. So here's what I like to do now. I always, always like to go back to gravity because that helps me. That's a very simple case. So let's go back to gravity and think a little bit about it. So imagine I have a stone lying on the ground. What happens when I, again, Mahesh, I move it up? What happens? Well, let's say I did, I did 100 joules of work in pushing it up. I do positive work in pushing it up. What happens to the potential energy? Well, if the initial potential energy was zero, when I do work, I add potential energy into this rock, and so the potential energy of the rock increases by 100 joules, right? And therefore, work done by me, Mahesh, work done by the external force, that equals the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy of the system. So let me write that down. So the work that I do, that equals the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. And what about the work done by the electric field? Well, I go back over here, ask myself, what is the work done by gravity over here? Well, when I'm pushing up, when I'm putting a force on it upwards, gravity is always putting a force on it downwards. So gravity is putting a force in the opposite direction, which means gravity is doing negative work. So the work done by gravity would be negative 100. Same will be the case over here. The work done by the electric field instead of gravitational field would be the negative of this. So that would be initial potential energy minus the final potential energy. Does that make sense? Don't ever, ever muck this up because we'll, we'll forget that. Always go back to gravity, take a simple case and that will always help us in coming back over here. So this means all I have to do now is think about what was the initial potential energy of the system, what is the final potential energy of the system, and then we can figure out um, the work done. So I encourage you to pause this video before we move forward and try it yourself. All right, so let me, sh let me draw what the initial, pot initial system looks like. This is what initially it looked like, 10, 10 uh, meters far away from each other. Then when I, once I did that work, the final system looks like this. And so the energy of this would be the final potential energy. And if I subtract that, I'll get the work done by me. One thing you may be curious about is, hey, what about the path taken? Doesn't that matter? No, it doesn't. Because electric fields are what we call conservative fields. It doesn't matter what path you take. All that matters is the, what is the initial state and the final state. The work done is path independent. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out these potential energies. Let's make some space over here. All right, a quick reminder of how we calculate potential energies of a system. We've seen this in a previous video. The way I like to remember is, first think about what, what is the potential energy of two charges. The potential energy of a system of just two charges would be K, we can call it one, two, K, Q1, Q2, divided by R, one, two. R, one, two is the distance between these two. And now if you want to calculate potential energy of a system of three charges, you take two at a time. It'll be the potential energy of this, plus potential energy of this system, plus potential energy of uh, this system. Same would be the case over here. And then once you substitute, we can subtract and we can get an answer. So again, if you haven't tried before, maybe now would be a great time to pause and try. 
All right, let's see. Let's start with the final potential energy over here. So that's going to be K. I'm gonna keep the K as it is, and I'm gonna put a bracket because K will be common everywhere. So first let's take these two charges. So Q1, Q2 is going to be minus five times minus five, that's 25. Divide by the distance between them, that's 10. Plus, then let's take these two charges. It's gonna be minus five times two, Q1, Q2, minus five times two, that's minus 10. Divide by this distance, that's gonna be three. Plus, let's take these two charges. We'll get the same answer as these two charges. So again, it'll be minus 10 over three. And I'll not simplify, let me just go ahead and write what the initial potential energy was going to be. Sometimes things cancel out. So that's going to be again K. I'm gonna take these two charges first. We'll get the same answer as what we got over here. So it's 25 by 10. Plus, when I did these two, this time I'll get minus 10 divided by 10. So minus 10 divided by 10. And again, I'll get the same over here. Minus 10 divided by 10. I have to now subtract this. So when I subtract, this cancels out. And so finally, what do I get? Okay, you can do this yourself. This is just now subtraction. Let me quickly do it. What I'll do is, this will be minus 20 by three, and this is minus 20 by 10. So I'll take that m minus 20 out. And what I re uh, have here is one over three. And what I'll have over here is minus one over 10 because we're subtracting. Minus one over 10, and you can check, you can pause and check. So we'll get minus 20 times k times, what is this? 10 minus three is seven, seven by 30. So this cancels and that'll end up with minus 14 over three. And now I'll substitute for k. You might remember k is nine times 10 to the power nine. So three cancels out. And let me write down over here the final answer. The change in potential energy is gonna be minus 42 so let me write that somewhere over here, okay. Minus 42 times 10 to the power nine joules. That's the change, oops. That's the change in potential energy. Therefore, the work done by me would be just this number, minus 42 billion joules, 10 power nine is, I'm just saving space over here, 10 power nine is billion, so I'll say minus 42 billion joules. And what is the work done by electric field? It's going to be the opposite of that. So I have opposite sign, so it's gonna be plus 42 billion joules. And by the way, this, this is only happening to be true because I'm slowly moving it without any acceleration, okay? I think I forgot to mention that in the question. I'm slowly moving it without any acceleration. That's important, that's why the total work done would be zero because there is no acceleration, there is no change in kinetic energy. Let's quickly try one more. We have three identical charges kept uh, at the vertices of an equilateral triangle. And let's say an external agent, again, me, let's say, I come in and I move all the three charges now. I move all the three charges in the given path and such that they form a new equilateral triangle of having uh, edge length R and the question now is, in doing so, if, if, you, if I move it very slowly without any acceleration, what is the total work done by the electric field? So can you pause the video and give it a shot? All right, so just like what we saw earlier, the work done by the electric field is the negative of the work done by me. So it's gonna be negative of final minus initial, it's gonna be initial minus final. So it's gonna be initial potential energy minus final potential energy. And the initial system is gonna look like, and the initial potential energy will be the potential energy of this system. And the final potential energy will be the potential energy of this system. So I can just go ahead and calculate. So initial potential energy is going to be just like before, I can take two charges at a time, K, Q1, Q2 by R, but notice this is, since they're all equal, it's gonna be just three times this number. So it's gonna be, three times K, Q1, Q2, by the distance. So it's Q squared by two R plus Q squared by two R plus Q squared by two R, that's gonna be three times that. Just trying to save some time and space over here. And the final potential energy is gonna be very similar, instead of two R, it's gonna be R. 
it's gonna be three K Q square over R. And now the work done by the electric field is going to be this minus this, initial minus final. You have to be very careful about the signs over here. So everything, the three K Q square by R is common. What remains now inside, let me write that. Let's not do too many things in our head. So three K Q square by R is common when I subtract. What remains is a half here minus what remains is the one here. So that means I end up with minus half. So I get minus three K Q square by two R. This is the work done by the electric field in moving, in changing that configuration.